Hello everyone, welcome to all of you on our series of Justice N.V. Ramna's landmark cases. In this one, we are going to dive deep into one of the judgments that he delivered on the very last day of his working. This was an appeal from the Calcutta High Court, which had reached the Supreme Court, where there was a challenge on the constitutionality of a law that the Union government passed in the year 2016. Now, this case relates to Benami transactions. Benami are those transactions, as you can guess from the name, Bina Nam Ki. So, Benami transactions were in question by a law that the court, the government had brought in earlier. So, in this episode of our landmark cases, we dive deep into the Union of India versus Ganpati Dealcom. So, but before we do that, there is something very, very exciting waiting for all the Unacademy learners in this space. So watch, continue to watch this space where we will be talking about that. And if you are someone who is watching me for the very first time, then I'm Kushagra Goyal, a graduate from National University, a Master's in Economics. And you all can reach out to me to the ticker link that is running below you or through the link that is Kushagra Goel underscore Unacademy. This Telegram channel ke through all of you can reach out to me. And the link of the judgment, the notes that you see on your screen will be available through bit.ly slash KUSHGK notes. So let's dive into the Union of India versus Ganpati Dealcom. Now this related to the law or the Benami prohibition law. So originally the law was brought in in 1988. Then it was amended in 2016. Now, the 2016 amendment changed the nature of the law in quite a significant manner. And that was challenged because Ganpati Dealcom, one of the organizations, stated that their transaction wasn't a Benami one, but the law itself was manifestly unconstitutional. So the case was a constitutional challenge or a judicial review on the legality of the Benami prohibition law that was brought in, whether certain provisions. So, there is one thing that we need to discuss before we dive into what the case is all about. It is the principle of reading down a law. Whenever we challenge a law, there is a presumption of constitutionality within it. What do we say? There is a presumption of constitutionality. What this means is that the law is presumed to be constitutional until proven otherwise. So a person who challenges the law has to establish that the law has is unconstitutional. So, but laws are to be tailor made. Not an entire legislation may be illegal or an entire provision or an entire law could be unconstitutional. So what the courts do, they look into specifics. So in this case also, we'll be talking about three particular sections of the law that were declared unconstitutional, which in the phrase of law is known as they were read down or the court read down the provisions that is section 3, 2, 3 and 5 of the law. So reading down is So now with this out of our way, let's dive deep into the Union of India versus Ganpati Dealcom, one of the last judgments penned by our 48th Chief Justice, that is Justice N.V. Ramana. So 
when did we first get the Benami transaction law or what is a Benami transaction all about? So Benami Transaction Prohibition Act prohibits Benami transactions and gives government the right to recover a Benami property. So if there is a Benami transaction that has happened, then those are prohibited. So generally, let's say I indulge in a Benami transaction ya main apni taraf se jaake koi Benami transaction pe sign karta hu. So then that is I am indulging in a crime. And the state has the right to recover the Benami property. Maan lete hai ki maine apni ek property ye remote control gave a, I gave it away in a Benami transaction. And now the government has the right to recover this property from me okay so that's the basic underlining of a benami transaction but what does it mean a, where a property is transferred to or is held by a person and the consideration for such property has been provided for or paid by another person so normally whenever we have a contract or a transaction there are two individuals within it and the consideration flows from the two of them jaise ki a ne contract kiya ki I will supply you with 50 apples and B ne ka okay I will pay you in return for 50 apples I will give you 3 rupees per apple so here the consideration is flowing from both the individuals A is giving B 50 apples and B is giving A 3 rupees per apple the consideration is being received by both the parties together. But if we take another example, let's remove this. Now we have to have a situation where a property is transferred and consideration for has been provided by another person. So A, let's say, has been transferred to. So A has been transferred a 50 acre property by B but A has not paid B anything C instead has paid B 50 lakh rupees for the land so here the C is not receiving any consideration but is parting with something and that is where a Benami transaction so this is one example of a Benami transaction as per our definition or A gives B 50 lakh rupees in return B gives to C who is the child of A a land of one acre okay now here they are indirectly related A and C are father son In this transaction, there is a dependency. The consideration is still flowing, but there is a dependency here. A is probably giving C this money or getting this property registered in the name of C for his future. So these are two examples of Benami transactions that we may have. Okay. Now, it also includes transactions where property is held for immediate or future benefit direct or indirect of the person who has provided the consideration. <clears throat> Binami transactions are for where the property is held for immediate or future benefit. So let's go back to our previous one. Here C has no use of this property but the money is being he has got this property for his future use. So here the benefit is not immediate but a future one okay or a direct or an indirect so let's give an example a supplies b with 50 lakh rupees b in return registers 50 acre property for c but the condition is c is a minor so the property is basically being controlled by A because C can't do any transactions. So here 
there is a future benefit involved so future benefit ab let's talk about an indirect benefit a and c are married a goes to kalyan jeweler gets a ring for b pays 2 lakh rupees and gets a ring in the name of c okay here a is not receiving any direct benefit but he is receiving a benefit in indirect sense he is probably going to get love in return okay because the partner is receiving a ring so here the interest or the benefit is indirect okay but just remember that normal contracts may consideration flows from one party to the other whenever we talk about a normal contract the consideration is flowing from one side to the other for example you pay me a fee i teach you i pay you for a service and you get it done so consideration is flowing two ways but in binami transactions the consideration is not flowing two ways okay you can note it down as short that in binami transaction between the two parties of the contract now but let's talk about an illegal binami transaction okay so abhi tak jo humne baat kari some of these are proper legal there is no intention to evade the law hai na to fir hum kyu baat kar rahe why do we want to prohibit such things is because there are certain times where there are actual illegal transactions for example a a real owner purchases a, a property from b in the name of c wherein a exercise the right interest over the property naam lagaya ki property khareedi gayi hai by c but actually a ne khareedi hai for example mera ye phone hai has been purchased by abhishek but is actually being purchased by samiksha so samiksha is the actual owner but is being purchased in the name of abhishek so now here if let's say the property is illegal the inquiry will go against c and a can go scot free so here there is an intention to defraud okay so maan lete hain a is a the actual owner but the property is being purchased in the name of c okay from b now this is a illegal transaction क्योंकि अब ऑल द राइट्स ऑन पेपर विल सीम बाय सी एंड इन केस देर इज समथिंग रॉन्ग इन द प्रॉपर्टी देन द लाइबिलिटी विल आल्सो अराइज टू सी बट द एक्चुअल कंट्रोल इज विद ए ए इज द वन हु इज एक्चुअली हैविंग कंट्रोल ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टी ओके नाउ देर आर सर्टेन अदर एग्जांपल्स ऑफ बेनामी ट्रांजेक्शन विच आर नॉट इनलीगल ओके तो दीज आर एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ बेनामी ट्रांजेक्शन विच आर not illegal number 1 a purchases property in the name of his son's wife b for whose benefit son's family from a treats the consideration as a gift to the son and pays the gift tax on it a purchases a property in the name of his son's wife apne bete ki wife ke naam pe he purchased the property for the benefit of son's family from person y now here there is no qualms about it there is a real person now b may not actually be giving the consideration but he or she has paid gift tax on it so it becomes a legal transaction another example a who is old and infirm purchases a property in the name of b intending that b will hold the property in the trust 
ऑफ द सन ऑफ ए उन्होंने बी से एक प्रॉपर्टी खरीदी अपने बेटे के लिए हु इज मेंटली रिटार्ड सो प्रॉपर्टी से जितनी भी वैल्यू आएगी वो ए के बेटे के लिए काम आ जाएगी क्योंकि ए का सन इज मेंटली रिटार्ड सो ही मे नॉट बी एबल टू टेक केयर ऑफ हिमसेल्फ सो दिस विल हेल्प हिम और हर सिक्योर द फ्यूचर ऑफ देयर चाइल्ड एंड इन द थर्ड वन a firm x purchases property in the name of working partner b for the benefit of firm x making payments out of firm's fund so firm ne khareedi apne partner ke naam pe for the benefit of the firm jaise ki office khareeda gaya ab office can only be sold to real person so okay partner ke naam pe khareed liya but use firm kar rahi hai aur paise bhi firm ke so all these are legal transactions benami मतलब कंसिडरेशन इज नॉट फ्लोइंग डायरेक्टली बट दे आर लीगल सो यू कैन नोट देम एज नॉट डायरेक्ट कंसिडरेशन बट स्टिल लीगल all right now what is the origin of benami now that we have understood that there can be transactions which have no direct consideration but are still legal what is the origin of the term so the term benami was alien to statutory law during colonial regime matlab hamare it's not a colonial law it has come post our independence okay and the word benami such transactions in earlier laws were referred at farzi transactions okay farzi ki galat hai fraud hai farzi fraud actual nahi hai true nahi hai us tarike se okay farzi not real sham transactions okay Now, over the passage of time, the nebulous concept appeared in cases without much clarity with respect to its basic contours. So, Benami transactions until 1988 were there, were happening, legal, illegal, without being under statutory control. So, until 1988. such legal or illegal without statutory oversight that is how it was happening so for example we say that you don't have to there is it isn't written at outside a shop that you have to stand in queue but still everybody stands in queue so that is how benami transactions were being governed now there were two ways of illegal benami transactions two concepts the first one is that benami does not hold the title over the property the person who is act actually having control doesn't have the title of the property the second view is that although the title passes to the benami dar he holds it in the trust so even if for example maine ek benami transaction kari abhishek ke naam property maine apni property abhishek ko bech di b ki property abhishek ko bikwa di okay but i still control over that property so there despite it being shown on the books that the property has been transferred to somebody i still retain control that is the second type of benami transaction where the title passes but control doesn't okay
So examples of this is first is tripartite where there are three people in a binami transaction A sells a property to A but the sale deed mentions C so A B ne apni property bechi A ko but the document says that the property has been sold to C this is the real person and C is the fake one or on paper okay this is a tripartite here three parties are involved tripartite means three parties okay this is for three parties in the case and then the next one is a bipartite where a sells the property to b without intending to pass the title to b okay this is by that is two parties a sells property to b without intending to pass title to it so let's say a has sold his property to b but the document so it's a under the table deal okay is tarike ki transaction ko aap aise keh sakte ho it's under the table okay the paperwork will still say that the property is of a but in reality who owns it b so b becomes the real owner and a is the benami owner or farzi owner because the property for all purposes has been transferred okay so for example i earn a lot of money in cash which is unaccounted income i want to make this or i i have a i want to dispense with the cash but i don't want it to be known to the person known to the income tax department okay so what do i do i purchase a property from b i have the paperwork of the property but and i can enjoy the property but the paper still says that b is the real owner okay so you could say another example if you want of this is so i can write this as a question also a has a lot of black money okay where you can say that the i think this isn't visible i'll write it below all right so a has a lot of money he buys b's house a now lives in the house but the title is still with b 
and the money of transaction was given secretly so nobody comes to know the transaction has happened but the authorities are in no information they have zero information that something like this has happened okay so this is the crux of the argument of a benami transaction a bipartite benami transaction means this okay now there are certain key terms that we also need to understand before we dive ahead into the case so first of all is property property kya hoti hai property is anything which is movable or immovable tangible or intangible corporeal or incorporeal and includes any right or interest or legal documents so movable immovable ho gayi movable jaise ki telephone remotes mobile phones anything a table chair that's a movable property immovable land house tangible something you can feel like a remote intangible shares okay you can't feel the shares it's there but you can't feel it bank fts corporeal incorporeal those can be corporated or instruments evidencing title or interest in the property property papers affidavits anything where the property is capable of conversion into some other form then the property is converted from in the converted form and also includes proceeds from the property so where the property is capable of conversion let's say it is a remote you can break it down into small so that again is a conversion of the property in some other form it can also be then the property in converted form also in includes property proceeds from the property so it's either way anything that you can have or create an interest in or can have a monetary value so in simplest terms you can can attach monetary value to it okay that's a property in the simplest of terms that's the property now before there are multiple examples of property that we can take okay so house land are forms of immovable property these are all examples okay tangible anything that you can touch so example of tangible property can also be furniture theek hai furniture is a tangible property whereas shares interest deeds intangible you can't feel them the money is there but you can't feel it it's a intangible property bitcoins are also intangible bitcoins is also a intangible property all right these are all examples of such then we have a benami dar who is a benami dar a benami dar is a person or a fictitious person as the case may be in whose name the benami property is transferred held or includes a person who lends his name any person can be a benami dar jo paise de raha hai jo property le raha hai transfer kar raha hai hold kar raha hai ya jiske naam pe chal rahi hai wo bhi benami dar ho sakta hai so a paid b 50 lakh rupees for a property which was registered in the name of c here a and c both can be benami dar individuals okay ya yeah, c is the actual as per the, the paper he is the benami dar he doesn't have the property but holds it okay the paper says his name 
सो ही इज द बेनामीदार ओके नाउ सच काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स इधर वे इट दिस कैन फ्लो इन बोथ द मैनर्स ऑल राइट बी पेड बट द प्रॉपर्टी इज नेम्ड आफ्टर सी दैट्स वेयर सी इज द बेनामीदार और वेन वी हैड आर प्रीवियस एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ हाउस और अ गिफ्ट इन द नेम ऑफ द वाइफ ओके इन दोज केसेज ऑल्सो द पर्सन हु इज डिपेंडेंट कैन बिकम द बेनामी दार नाउ बेनिफिशियल ओनर अ पर्सन वेदर हिज आइडेंटिटी इज नोन और नॉट फॉर हुज बेनिफिट बेनामी प्रॉपर्टी इज हेल्ड बाय द बेनामी दार सो अगेन लेट्स गो बैक टू आर एग्जाम्पल ए बी गिवस ए फिफ्टी लैख रुपीज एंड द प्रॉपर्टी इज रजिस्टर्ड इन द नेम ऑफ सी ओके सो हेयर अ पर्सन बी इज द बेनिफिशियल ओनर वेर एज सी इज द बेनामी दार ओके then we have the test for a benami transaction so now that we have understood how do we determine or differentiate between a valid benami transaction and an invalid benami transaction so this was decided in the case of jay dayal podar versus bb hazra so there are six things that need to be established for a benami transaction the source from which द परचेज मनी केम सबसे पहले आपको पता होना चाहिए कि पैसा कहाँ से आया सो मैं ने एक प्रॉपर्टी खरीदी अपनी सैलरी से सो द सोर्स ऑफ माई मनी इज माई सैलरी नेचर एंड पजेशन ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी आफ्टर परचेज मैंने खरीद के रेंट पे दे दी मोटिव इफ एनी फॉर गिविंग ट्रांजेक्शन अ बीनामी कलर इज देर अ इंटेंशन टू गिव इट अ बीनामी कलर मैंने अपने छोटे भाई के लिए एक वॉच खरीदी उसके नाम पर रजिस्टर कराई पेमेंट अपनी सैलरी से किया is there a motive of mine to actually do a binami transaction no but i bought a watch for my brother from illegal money the source of the money is not known i got it registered in my brother's name and the money was received by the watch company here there is a motive to give it a binami color second number 4 position of the parties and the relationship if any between the client क्लेमेंट एंड दी अलेस्ड बेनामी दार क्या उनके बीच में कोई रिलेशनशिप है वर दे फ्रेंड्स आर दे रिलेटेड टू इच अदर अगर दे आर नॉट रिलेटेड वाई वुड दे यू ट्रांसफर अ प्रॉपर्टी वाइफ के नाम पर प्रॉपर्टी रजिस्टर कराना समझ में आता है बट मान लेते देर इज अ रैंडम पर्सन जैसे कि जैकलिन फर्नांडिस के केस में देर इज दिस दैट अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉपर्टीज वर रजिस्टर्ड इन हर नेम अ लॉट ऑफ गिफ्ट फ्रॉम इलीगल मनी बाय हर अर्लियर बॉय फ्रेंड हु इज नाउ इन अंडर चार्जेस वर purchased by him from illegal money and transferred in her name so and there they have no formal relationship so why would you do it for her that makes the link number 5 the custody of title deeds after the sale kiske paas actual title kiske paas hai kagzo mein aur actual custody kiske paas hai property ki maan lete hain ki property naam to c ke hai but title a ke paas mil raha hai to it could be that it is a benami transaction and number 6 the conduct of parties concerned in dealing with property after the sale sale hone ke bawajood they have been remaining in constant touch they have been planning to purchase more or less or something like that so those six things need to be established for a valid test of a benami transaction all six now what would the case before the supreme court now when we got the case what were the submissions by the union government the union is the case filer the case is union of india versus dealcom okay so in that regard the union makes the submissions the so the first one was that the law or the parliament has power to enact a retrospective legislation ki even in criminal laws we can make a retrospective law ab retrospective kya hota hai from a back date 
ओके जब केस बनाया गया था जब आपने ट्रांजैक्शन किया तब वो बेनामी नाम का कोई लॉ नहीं था बट अब उसे कह रहे हैं कि नहीं नहीं ये बेनामी ट्रांजैक्शन है तो दैट इज अ रेट्रोस्पेक्टिव एप्लीकेशन कि ये जो इवेंट हुआ है ये एक रेट्रोस्पेक्टिव एप्लीकेशन के तहत हुआ है ओके देन सेकेंड प्रोहिबिशन एग्जिस्ट ओनली ऑन कन्विक्शन एंड सेंटेंसिंग ऑफ एक्सपोज फैक्टो लॉज एंड नॉट अगेंस्ट पासिंग सच अ लॉ मतलब I may not be able to sue a person for retrospective laws, but I can make a retrospective law. That was the second argument. The first is that I do have a power to make this law, and secondly, I may not actually sue people, but I can still make the law the way it is. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, in such matters, again, when we have gifts. और एनी ऑफ दिस इन अब उसी तरीके से वेन यू आर अनअवेयर दैट समथिंग इज अ इलीगल एक्ट तो यू कांट बी एंड लाइबल उसी तरीके से आपको पता ही नहीं है कि आपके नाम पर कोई प्रॉपर्टी खरीद ली गई है इसी वजह से आधार कार्ड की आइडेंटिटी सीक्रेट रखना जरूरी है कोई आपको इम्पर्सोनेट कर रहा है प्रॉपर्टी खरीद रहा है आपके नाम से और उसको यूज कर रहा है रजिस्टर आपके नाम पे करवाया बट इलीगल चीज़ों के लिए यूज़ कर रहा है इसीलिए आधार कार्ड की आईडी रखना सुरक्षित इम्पॉर्टेंट होता है ओके okay? क्योंकि आपको कोई इम्पर्सोनेट कर सकता है देन द नेक्स्ट आर्ग्यूमेंट बाय देम वाज द फोर फीचर एक्विजिशन एंड कॉन्फिस्केशन आर नॉट पनिशमेंट्स देर नॉट सब्जेक्ट ऑफ आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी अगर किसी की प्रॉपर्टी अक्वायर करी जा रही है केस फाइल हुआ और अब हमने सारी बेनामी प्रॉपर्टी स्टेट ने अपने पास रख लिए दैट द गवर्नमेंट इज सेंग इज नॉट पनिशमेंट उनकी आर्ग्यूमेंट थी एंड नंबर फोर द एजुडिकेशन प्रोसीडिंग्स आर नॉट इन नेचर ऑफ प्रोसिक्यूशन एंड हेंस कैन नॉट बी रेस्ट्रिक्टेड बाय आर्टिकल ट्वेंटी जो भी आपने रेस्ट्रिक्शन अगर किसी के ऊपर प्रोसिक्यूशन लगाया है ओके okay, किसी के ऊपर बेनामी का नोटिस भेजना इज नॉट अ नेचर ऑफ प्रोसिक्यूशन केस नहीं बन रहा है ओके सो दैट वॉज द सबमिशन and lastly the acquisition of property without paying compensation amounts to confiscation property le lena bina compensation diye bina payment diye is confiscation and confiscation envisions civil liability agar aapne kisi ki property bina paise diye li hai to aap liable ho aisa unka manna tha so what were established we'll come to it now but before i get into that once again if you are a student who is preparing for the clat law examination and you want to cover your current affairs in static gk i have started a new batch for all of you the batch will have three classes per week one hour each on three days of the week and to enroll for this batch you can use the code k u s h g k this code will allow you to get a discount the classes of the batch begin on august the 31st but if you are watching it a little later you can still enroll by using the link in the description of the video if you subscribe by the end of august the 31st you will be able to get a 35% discount on the subscriptions and if you do it a little later then also a new batch is starting for clat 2024 students in this batch there are 50 live mock tests plus 150 other mocks 450 sectional test monthly compendium in gk magazines plus live classes from our expert educators this batch is named as success nlu for clad 2024 students so if you want to join the, these students as toppers of the clad 2022 examination enroll for our iconic subscription at the earliest because in iconic you get live mentorship doubt solving priority in classes and you also get physical notes these physical notes contain previous year question papers strategies material study guidance study guides everything delivered to your doorstep within 15 days so if you want physical material take the iconic one if you do not want that you can take the plus category subscription and subscribe take it at right now abhi during the offer price you will be paying a mere 14500 for a 3 month subscription and saving 4000 5400 rupees on your subscription so make maximum savings use the code KUSHGK for availing this offer 
do it at the earliest because prices of subscriptions will go up from September 1 onwards so you wouldn't want to pay more for the same thing. If you have any other concerns you can contact us on 85858585 and if you are on Instagram and want to get your updates about an academy directly in Instagram you can scan the QR code on the bottom left corner. So what was the decision of the court? सबसे पहले कोर्ट ने कहा कि ब्लैंकेट बैन ऑन ऑन बेनामी ट्रांजैक्शंस पुट लेजिटिमेट ट्रांजैक्शंस एट रिस्क लेजिटिमेट ट्रांजैक्शंस कैसी थी जैसे हमने बताया ए ने अपने बीमार बच्चे सी के लिए एक प्रॉपर्टी खरीदी फ्रॉम बी ठीक है रजिस्टर करवाया सी के नाम ए इज द फॉर इज फ्यूचर सेविंग फ्रॉम बी नाउ दिस इज अ लेजिटिमेट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट उसने प्रॉपर्टी दी गॉट द लैंड इन रिटर्न for his son's future this is a legitimate transaction similarly a got a land registered in the name of a's wife c he paid b for the same now again this is a legitimate transaction but agar blanket ban lagaya jayega to in sab ke upar bhi jail ho sakti hai which is what the court held is unconstitutional so legitimate binami transactions kaise decide hongi without requirement of mens rea jahan pe element hi nahi hai jhoot bolne ka wahan pe kisi ko liable hold karna galat hai so mens rea element hona chahiye for strict liability okay अदरवाइज यू कांट स्ट्रिक्ट लाइबिलिटी में होता है द मोमेंट यू डू समथिंग यूर लाइबल इर रिस्पेक्टिव आपकी इंटेंशन थी नहीं थी जैसे कि न्यूसेंस कॉज करना आप किसी को न्यूसेंस कॉज नहीं करना चाह रहे थे बट दस बजे के बाद लाउड म्यूजिक बजा रहे थे तो इट विल कॉज न्यूसेंस इट डजेंट मैटर वेदर यू इंटेंडेड टू डू इट और नॉट देन द कोर्ट रेकग्नाइज दैट बीनामी ट्रांजेक्शन आर जनरली रेकग्नाइज बाई लॉ and no mens rea element in the provision all that prosecution needs to establish was paid consideration so bina mens rea ke kya hoga har tarike ki transaction benami recognize ho jayegi which is bad in law is tarike ki cheez hona kya hoga will be bad in law okay and also against the objective of the law kyunki the objective of the law was that you had to put those people who wanted to defraud the state behind bars but isse to aap sabko jail mein dal sakte ho then next is manifest arbitrariness so the law gave a lot of leeway for delegated legislation theek hai The provision ignored the essential ingredient of beneficial ownership. क्योंकि इसके अंदर legitimate concerns में जहाँ कोई अपने parents, child, partner या कोई और friend के लिए genuinely बेनामी transaction कर रहा है वहाँ पर भी you are holding them accountable, which is wrong, which is manifestly arbitrary. ऐसा करना गलत है क्योंकि किसी की intention नहीं है कोई crime करने की और फिर भी because अब द लॉ इज अ क्रिमिनल लॉ एंड इन क्रिमिनल लॉ यू नीड टू हैव अ गिल्टी माइंड ठीक है क्राइम विदाउट अ गिल्टी माइंड इज आर्बिट्ररी अपनी मन मर्जी से आपने बस पनिश करना है तो कर दिया दैट इज रॉन्ग एंड नेक्स्ट इज एक्सेसिव डेलीगेशन क्योंकि जो लॉ था बर्डन ऑफ प्रूफ कौन सी कर सकता है कब प्रॉपर्टी डिसाइड होगी कब प्रॉपर्टी के ऊपर कॉन्फिस्केशन होगा कैसे कॉन्फिस्केशन होगा कैसे डिटर्मिनेशन होगा वो सब कुछ अथॉरिटीज के पास था मतलब पुलिस ऑफिसर्स या जो स्यू कर रहे लॉ में अपने आप कोई प्रोविजन नहीं था इससे क्या होता है कि इंडिविजुअल्स कैन नॉट रेगुलेट देयर कॉन्डक्ट जब कोई क्रिमिनल लॉ है तो इट हैज टू बी स्पेसिफिक नैरो 
एंड सर्टिन अब क्योंकि एक इंडिविजुअल इज इन दी अथॉरिटी ही थिंक्स ए वे दी अदर पर्सन थिंक्स बी वे सो द लॉ मे चेंज द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ क्रिमिनल लॉ मे डिफर फ्रॉम पर्सन टू पर्सन इस वजह से क्रिमिनल लॉज आर टू बी स्पेसिफिक नैरो एंड सर्टिन क्योंकि ये ऐसा नहीं था इट वॉज डेलीगेटेड लेजिस्लेशन एंड आर्बिट्ररी कोर्ट ने कहा दिस इज हाफ बेक्ड एंड आर्बिट्ररी सो यू ऑल द लॉज ऑफ the court need to have a certainty okay so with this section 2 3 and 5 of the law were declared unconstitutional second no retrospective application of law and number 3 that so with this the court held ki benami transactions post 2016 can be held as crime but they need to be certain and the law needs to be corrected so the contentions of the union were denied in the last okay so with this we come to the end of our story of the benami prohibition law case or the union of india versus dealcom case and you can still connect with me and if you have any doubts you can reach out to me through my telegram channel that is kushagrigoel underscore an academy and the notes of this class or this ppt can be accessed through bit.ly/kusgk notes aap yahan se isko access kar sakte ho lastly once again if you want to subscribe to our new batch that is law star for your clat 2023 preparation and want to study your current affairs from me you can subscribe to the batch at the earliest using the code kusgk for your referral discount the classes begin on 31st you can start out the earliest and you can watch the previous classes as recordings also on that note There is a special session planned for all of you at 5 p.m. on August 31st on stress management and by Tanvi ma'am on exam and time management. On that note, agar aapko ye analysis about this story of the Bainami transaction case, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Aapke likes ke bager is tarike ka content free me provide karna is not possible. So do support as much as you can and share it with somebody who you. feel needs to know about this and if you are if you like if you want more such content do subscribe to the channel for future updates so stay tuned for this space for more news on that note thank